welcome to Community of Faith. If you're in the room, would you stand with us? If you're joining us online, we hope as we sing these songs that you're able to remind yourself and respond to who God is. So we begin just to, with this reminder that we can cast our anxieties on Him, that He's big enough to carry Him, and so we ask for Him to meet us here now. God, we praise you. Let's sing this together. Speak to me when the silence steals my voice. You understand me, you understand me. Come to me in the valley of unknowns. You understand me, you understand me. Yes, he does. You understand me, God. You understand. So I don't want my cares before you. My doubts and fears don't scare you. You're bigger than I thought you were. You're bigger than I thought. And I suffer negotiations with the God of all creation. You're bigger than I thought you were. You're bigger than
who we worship for reminding ourselves of the preeminence of Christ. He's the firstborn from the dead, the, the one who is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth, under the earth, every tongue confess, this is who our God is. And so now we just remind ourselves of what Jesus accomplished for us. The darkness that was the death of Jesus and the light and the hope that came with his resurrection. Let's remind ourselves through song. Sing this with us. There was a moment when the lights went out. Death had claimed its victory. The king of love had given up his life. The darkest day in history. They're on a cross they made for sinners. For every curse is blood. breath and it was finished, not the end we could have known, for the earth began to shake, and the veil was torn, what sacrifice was made, as the heavens Give him praise, all hail the King. So hail King Jesus.
give him our praise. We sing to him. We remind ourselves of what he accomplished for us on the cross, and he's worthy this morning. Thank you for singing with us. You can go ahead and be seated. community of faith. It's so good to come together today, to be together this morning on Super Bowl Sunday um, online and in the room. It's good to see you. Um, you just watched a video about an event coming up at the end of this month called For Our City. And uh, one of the things that we talk about that we love about this place, about you, is that this is one of the most generous churches in the world. And we believe that because it's something that's been consistent over the years. And this is an opportunity to not just be generous with our finances, but also to be generous with one of our weekends this month, to give of our time and to give up a Saturday to come together and make a difference in our community. And so um, I'm inviting you. I would love for you to consider participating in this. It's going to be an incredible day, a day of celebration, a day of impact. And I want you to know that whether you're uh, stuck at home and, and quarantined in this season or even in this room, there is a place for you to serve. There are virtual opportunities to serve on the 27th. There are opportunities here on our campus that are going to uh, be involved with building things and creating things that are going to go out to our community. And then there's things that are going to be happening all around the community as well. So uh, if you go to the website, cof.church, you can find those opportunities for families, for individuals, but it's going to be an incredible day. I cannot wait for that. And I really hope that you'll consider uh, participating in that. Several have asked, where can we get a t-shirt? You can buy these t-shirts at the cafes this morning. You can also purchase those online. And uh, so it's going to be an incredible time. You'll continue to hear us talk about that. Um, I want to make a specific special welcome this morning to anybody that may be tuning in for the first time online or you're here in the room for the first time at Community of Faith. On behalf of our entire staff, uh, I just want to say welcome. We're glad that you chose to be here. We're honored that you would take some time to spend with us. Uh, you'll notice if you go to cof.church or if you test text best you to 97,000. Uh, that'll take you to a page with a lot of different options about things going on here at Community of Faith, as well as an opportunity to connect a little bit more. You'll see a place there where there's a connect card. It says connect here. But that's just a place to fill out a little bit of information about yourself, about your family, not so that we can smother you this week with phone calls and emails and personal visits to your house. Uh, that's not our intention. We simply just want to know you. We believe that we are better when we are connected with one another. You'll also see on there, even if you're not here for the first time, a place to fill out a prayer request. That's one of the ways that we get to do life together is to pray with one another. Our staff would be honored to pray specifically for you, for your family, your specific situation this week. So take a minute, fill that out, whether you're in the room or online. We'd ask that you would do that just so we can know that you're here. We would love to stay connected in these days. You also see several things coming up. I wanna make a special highlight for parent-child dedication, that's coming up in a couple of weeks, an opportunity for us to uh, dedicate the little ones to God that we are committing to raising them up, understanding who Jesus is and what that means for their life. If you would like to participate in that, be a part of that, then you can register at cof.church. Uh, we've, we're gonna have an incredible time together today. So uh, let me pray, and then we'll continue on this morning. God, I thank you for who you are. I thank you that we get the opportunity to be together even in a space maybe that's disconnected geographically, but wherever everyone may be this morning, I pray that you would work, that you would move, that you would show us a better understanding of who you are. We wanna know you more, we wanna trust you more. And so we pray that that would happen. And as a result of that, we would experience miracles. We would experience life change, that some of the things that feel really overwhelming in our lives right now would not feel that way because of what we're going to experience in our time together today. So we simply want to look to you and focus on you in Jesus' name, amen. Now, one of the things we've always done at Community of Faith every single week is remember Jesus through communion. 
We remember the sacrifice that he made in our place when he went to the cross. When we take the bread, we remember that it was his body that was broken on our behalf and his blood that was poured out. That's what we remember when we take that cup. We remember that he did what you and I weren't capable of doing so that we could have life with our heavenly father forever. So if you're a follower of Jesus this morning, you've made that decision to make him the, the Lord, the master, your everything in your life, then I wanna invite you, even if it's your first time, to take communion. So as the band comes back up and as they sing, let's remember Jesus through communion this morning. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Cause your name is power Your name is healing Your name And I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over fear and all anxiety To every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus Your name Cause your name is power Your name
speak Jesus. Holy speak your name. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Let's sing this out together. being with us and you can have a seat. To get today by bringing our tithes and our offerings, it's one of the ways that we continue to display our trust in our Heavenly Father, trusting Him with something that is so valuable to us, but it's also one of the ways that we get to participate in all that God is doing in this place and through this place all around the world. It's your generosity that empowers that, that enables that. And there's a few ways that you can do that this morning. The easiest way is to simply take out your phone and text the word COF GIVE, one word, to 77977. If you're not um, able to do that, you can jump online and you can click on the Give button on the COF.church website. Or if you want to mail something in, you're online, you want to mail your offering in, you can do that. You'll see the address on the bottom of your screen. In the room, there's boxes as you leave later this morning that you can drop your offering in if that's the way that you would prefer to do it. That, all of those ways are okay. But it's one of the ways that we get to come together and continue to make a difference all around the world. We've been in a teaching series the last several weeks called Hope for Your Home. And a couple of weeks ago, we had a conversation on a Wednesday night and you all submitted questions that really fueled the conversation with Mark and Laura and some others on our team, just kind of talking about what it looks like to parent well and how, talking about some family dynamics. And we want to do that again and we want to hear from you again as we think more specifically, Valentine's Day is coming up. And so thinking about relationships and the dynamics between husbands and wives, or maybe a couple that eventually want to become husband and wife. And so I want to invite you, uh, as you were listening to Marco teach last week, when he was uh, speaking specifically to the guys, or as Laura comes and teaches this morning, talking to the ladies, as you think about that and you think about questions, we would love to have the opportunity to answer those. That's gonna all happen on Wednesday, not this Wednesday, but Wednesday, February 17th at 7 p.m. That'll go live on YouTube and Facebook. But at any time today, you can text the word COF question to 97,000 and we will answer those questions, have conversation about those on the 17th. I am excited to hear from Laura. I got to listen to the last service and I believe that she's got a message that's strong for guys and girls. Um, but ladies, I know you'll be super encouraged by this. Guys, you'll be challenged as well. So I'm gonna pray for Laura as she comes up and teaches this week. God, we thank you for today. 
God, just quickly, I wanna ask that you would be heard from in the next few minutes as Laura points to your word, to your truth. Would you use that to impact our lives today? I pray that you would speak through Laura, use her words, give her focus. And we trust you with this time in Jesus' name, amen. everybody. We are in the middle of our Hope for Our Home series, like Wes talked about. We've talked about hope for our families, hope for our kids, hope for our finances. If you were here last weekend, you heard Marco talk about hope for the men, and I'm here today to bring a little hope for the women. But guys, don't think this isn't for you as well. You know, we say here that we are uh, family together, that we're going to do life together, and that's exactly what we want to do today. So even as you listen today, I hope that you'll ask God to show you what, how you can come alongside the women in your life and encourage them as well, because you all have women in your life. At least you have a mother, um, if not a sister, a co-worker, a wife. Um, so this is for all of us, even as I speak to the women this morning. I think if you ask the average woman on the street or the average woman in this room today, um, she would tell you that she has moments of anxiety and fear and doubt, and that those moments are lasting longer and coming closer together. And I can tell you that because I've had the same thing. And I think most women would tell you that they're overwhelmed and exhausted by everything they have to do. And, and they're worried that they're not doing enough. You know, their husband tells them that they're too much. The boss tells you that you're not enough. And then the kids come along and, and they put demands on your time and money and emotional well-being. We've all heard the usual advice over and over, right? I mean, green smoothies and supplements and exercise and meditation and mindfulness and coloring books and bath bombs and, and all those kind of things. And sometimes that helps for a little while. Those are all good things. They can help for a little while, but it doesn't last. And then the kids are struggling and you get that crisis at work or the new project that's dumped into your lap or you have that same old argument with your partner and you, you just fall into this thinking of, I just can't do it. I can't live this life. I'm failing at life. And the problem isn't that women aren't trying. On the contrary, we're trying all the time. We want to be everything that our families, that the world, that our bosses demand of us. We want that. And we'll try anything, breathing exercises, a retreat, whatever it is that the world says we need. The problem isn't that we're not trying. The problem is that none of those things will bring lasting joy and peace and strength and comfort. So we're trying the wrong things. They bring temporary relief to us, but they can't supply the things that our souls are crying out for. And we continue striving and striving after the wrong things, and we end up making things so much worse. And that was all before the pandemic, right? I mean, since the pandemic, studies show that, that 50 5% of women, 55% of women have experienced some sort of um, income loss. Did you know that? 41% of women have felt afraid and wondered how they're going to put food on the table. And I'm pretty sure that 100% of mothers are concerned about the impact on their children, on their development, on their education, on their emotional well-being. Every aspect of life has changed. So it's no surprise then if you're feeling a little shaky today, if your sanity seems to be in question, maybe. But I want to encourage you today that although you may feel unsure, God is sure. You may feel unsteady, but God is steady. You may feel out of control, but God is still in control. Even though you're unmoored, God is anchored. He hasn't changed the whole world changed over the course of this last year, but God hasn't changed and he won't change. I want you to remember that this morning. You know, most of us have the belief that we're supposed to be happy, that things are supposed to go well and be good and easy, but the truth is just the opposite. Suffering is normal 
It's a normal part of the world that we live in. The Apostle Peter describes our life here on earth as a fiery ordeal. That pretty much sums it up, right? I mean, heartache and tragedy, illness and pressures, irritations of all kind show up every day, all the time. And, and there's no, uh, they come indiscriminately. They don't confine themselves to one season of life. Every season has those things, right? So what do we do? In 2020, my father-in-law passed away. I lost my uncle to a stroke from COVID. Mark tore his tendon two surgeries later. He's still recovering. Mark and I had COVID, our daughter, our son-in-law, various family members, my brother. We have family members out of work. Life is hard, and it doesn't seem to let up, does it? Psychiatrist and author Scott Peck says in his book, The Road Less Traveled, he opens the book with, life is difficult. And that's just the truth. So often we think it should be easy. And if it's not, then we think either something's wrong with me or I'm doing something wrong. But the Bible tells us it's to be expected. That's life here on this planet. Jesus said in John 16, for in this unbelieving world, you will experience trouble and sorrow, but you must be courageous for I have conquered the world. Suffering isn't a failure of faith on your part. Suffering doesn't mean that God's promises don't hold true for you. Suffering is just a part of life. Jesus told us it would be that way. The apostles told us it would be that way. Second Timothy said, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So suffering is just a part of life. It's part of the world that we live in. And I think when we're aware of that truth, maybe it becomes just a little tiny bit less less difficult for us. So I want you to tuck that truth away, hold on to it, and just know that if you're experiencing trouble, you're normal. Everything's okay. That's the way life is. But there's also another reality for those of us that are followers of Jesus, and it's this. We were meant for joy. We were created joy. That's what God wants us to experience in our life. And I know so often in this crazy world, that seems impossible. How do we grab hold of joy, especially with this never-ending news cycle and all the things that keep coming up? It, It feels like joy can't be ours, but God says it is yours. And it's the joy that stands in the face of these difficult times. It's a joy that that never lets go, that never gives up. Jesus said in John 15, 11, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. God wants you to experience a life full of joy, his joy. But you know, there's a difference between joy and happiness, right? I think oftentimes we're seeking after happiness when we should be seeking after joy. Happiness is so uh, circumstantial. It just depends on what's going on in your life at the moment, right? I mean, I'm happy if I wake up and realize it's my day off. I'm happy when I get to go on vacation. I'm happy when there's bluebell ice cream in the freezer. I don't know about you. Um, Maybe you're happy when you get a text from a friend or your coworker brings you coffee. I mean, it's good to be happy. We all wanna be happy. But happiness is unpredictable and fleeting. It's tied to my circumstances. It can't last. Joy is something else altogether. It's not happiness multiplied. It's a whole different substance. And the Bible says that joy is rooted in the presence of God. Listen to Psalm 1611. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Joy is connected to God. And it's reserved for those of us who are connected to him. That's how it works. And it's God's joy. It's immovable. It's unshakable. It's available all the time, whenever you need it, wherever you need it. I don't know about you, but I'd trade happiness any day to have God's joy. And I'm pretty sure you would too. I mean, we all want more joy. Joy in our relationships, joy with our children, joy in our jobs, joy even in those quiet moments that we have to ourselves. And that's exactly what the Bible says we are meant to experience. We were created for that. Stacey Eldridge in her book, Defiant Joy, says this, Joy is the heartbeat of heaven, the very light that emanates from Jesus' heart. So as we grow closer in relationship with God, we'll also grow in joy. That's the key, right? And his joy is immovable, just as he is. 
So whatever may be swirling around you, you can have joy at the center of the storm, at the eye of the storm. But how do we get there? The simple answer is that we need to come to know God more deeply. That's where we find joy. As we grow in our relationship with him, we experience more and more joy. When we get closer to him, we have more joy, and we begin to believe and rest in his promises and in his truth. God wants to be the center on which your life turns. That's how he designed your life to be. And if you're not experiencing joy today, I'm pretty sure you're not operating in God's presence. One of the big things I think that keeps us from experiencing joy and God's peace is that instead of developing our relationship with him, we try to self-soothe. We think we can do it ourselves. We can manage ourselves. At least I do. Listen to this verse in Ephesians 5.18. It says, don't drink too much wine, for many evils lie along that path. Be filled instead with the Holy Spirit and controlled by him. I think it's interesting that God compares those two things, being drunk with wine or filled with the Holy Spirit. It seems to imply that you can't have them both at the same time, right? When you think about it, there's kind of this whole culture surrounding wine and women nowadays. You guys see that. I know you do. You see memes pop up all the time about it. There's whole businesses related to that. It seems to tell us that as women, we can't really function if we don't have a glass of wine that we can't parent our children without wine. We can't relate to our husband without wine. We can't make it through the day. We can't survive without wine. And I wonder, is that really true? I mean, is wine going to bring me peace and happiness and connection and joy? Because the Bible says something different. Listen what it says. It says, don't be filled up with wine. It's really talking about self-soothing. Maybe it's not wine for you. Maybe it's something else like online shopping or eating or or whatever it is you turn to to make yourself feel better, to help you get through today, to get through that meeting or to numb your feelings, thinking you're going to get peace and strength. But instead, you just end up with more turmoil and difficulty. The Bible says don't do that. Don't be drunk with self-soothing. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit soothe and comfort your soul. And there's a reason for that. Listen to what happens when you do. Galatians 5.22 says this, But the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit within you is divine love, and it's all its varied expressions, joy that overflows, peace that subdues, patience that endures, kindness in action, a life full of virtue, faith that prevails, gentleness of heart, and strength of spirit. Wine can't do those things. And neither can chocolate or exercise or Xanax or caffeine, whatever your choice of comfort is. And I'm not saying those things are bad. They're not bad. Simply that they can't produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life. And that's what we're longing for. That's what we're striving for, that peace that comes, the joy, the strength, the hope, the kindness, gentleness, patience, all of those things come from God's Spirit. So the first thing we have to do is stop trying to produce that on our own. Stop trying to soothe ourselves, but to ask the Holy Spirit to come and do it in us. When Mark and I were first married, we really struggled. We've told you that before if you've been here for any length of time. And and I don't mean just we had a few problems, but it was to the extent that Mark was ready to walk out the door and be done. And I was honestly ready to let him. And somehow during that course of time, Mark started asking me every day, did you spend time with God today? Have you read your Bible? And you can imagine how well that went over with me. Um, (laughs) But somehow, God spoke to my heart during that time, and I realized that, you know what? Mark's probably right. I haven't been doing that. I haven't been walking with God. I haven't been reading my Bible or spending time meditating on his words, spending time in prayer. And so I secretly started to do it. I didn't want him to know that I was listening to what he said. And I secretly started spending time with God every day. And the most amazing thing happened. My heart was transformed, but our marriage began to transform. And I've been doing it every day for the last 37 years since. Maybe being filled with the Spirit is a new concept to you. You don't understand what that really means or how to do that, but it's really simple. All you have to do is ask God every day to fill you with the Spirit. I write my prayers out in a journal because it helps keep me focused, and I literally write every day, 
God, please fill me with your Holy Spirit. Search my heart, cleanse my heart, remove anything in there that's not from you. And you know what? He does it. He's faithful to do it. He wants to be there with you. That's his purpose for you. And I honestly believe that this one thing turned our marriage around all those years ago. And he wants to come in and turn your life around too. When we live filled with God's spirit, we find his joy filling us up. Even on the dark and difficult days, joy comes with the presence of God in your life, with his Holy Spirit present in your life. Another thing that keeps us from experiencing joy is that we compare ourselves to others. And I think women are the worst at that. And probably men are just as bad, but they don't let us know, right? They don't talk about it. But God says to run your particular race. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. God designed and created you uniquely you. How many of you compare yourselves to other women? Don't raise your hand because I know you all do it. The minute you do that, Your joy flies out the window. And you know what comes in its place? Self-doubt and anxiety, self-loathing sometimes, envy, grief. That's not how you want to live, is it? Comparing yourself to someone else is such a dangerous thing. Studies even show that when you compare yourself to other people, you uh, lose your ability to trust people. And you devalue your own self. That's never what God wants for you. If you're looking to somebody else, comparing yourself with somebody else to find your value and worth, you're always going to come up losing. That's guaranteed. If you Google the danger of comparing yourself to other people, which I did this week, hundreds of articles come up, thousands probably. It's dangerous. And here's what I want you to remember. God designed and created you uniquely you for your purpose. He's planned out your life. He's planned out your course, your race. And it's only yours. And the Bible says, follow that path. Listen to Hebrews 12.1. Let us run with patience the particular race that God has set before us. I think it's so important that we realize that's what God has done. And that's what he has for us. He's planned your particular race. And it's not anybody else's. Your life is not supposed to look like anybody else's life. It's the one God designed for you. The problem comes when I start comparing my life to somebody else looking around. Well, I mean, her life looks a little easier. Maybe a little more prestigious, a little more fun. I mean, why did God give me this life? And all of a sudden, all those negative feelings come in again. Do any of you guys ski? When I was in high school, my family lived in California, and and my parents decided we were going to learn to ski. And so they took us to Mammoth Mountain, and we took lessons, and we all learned to ski, and we would go back every year. And it was really fun. And I remember I got to be uh, really fast coming down that mountain. And I I remember one particular day, I was zooming down that mountain, and and I thought, I mean, I looked pretty cool, I'm just going to tell you. And I had the matching ski outfit and the cool sunglasses and the little beanie on my head. I mean, it's kind of cute. And I started looking around to see, you know, did anybody else notice what I'm noticing about myself? Cool and cute, right? And the minute I started looking around, I suddenly lost complete control. And I ended up wrapped around a tree at the bottom of the run. And everybody noticed then. (laughs) Who is that girl? That's a true story, but the point of that story is when we get our eyes off our course, we end up a wreck. That's not what God had designed for you. He says, follow your course. Follow what I've called you to do. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Quit looking at Instagram. Quit following on social media. That's not what he has for you. Galatians 6, 4 and 5 says this, pay careful attention to your own work for then you'll get the satisfaction of a job well done, and you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else, for we're each responsible for our own conduct. Pay careful attention to your own work. God himself personally designed your course, and the Bible says run that course. Don't compare yourself to anyone else, not the neighbor, not the mom who makes cookies every week, not the girl at the office who always gets rewarded. Look to God and look to your race. Don't compare yourself. So often I fall into believing lies and choosing to fo- and 
not choosing to focus on God's truth, that's so easy to do, isn't it? And the enemy loves to come along and whisper those lies to you to tell you you're not good enough, you don't measure up. God wants us to consciously choose what we believe, to consciously choose the truth that we're going to operate from. And you know you have the power to do that. The problem is so often we think we're powerless, but God says we have the power to choose. Anytime you think you're a failure, that's a lie from hell. Anytime you think you're not a good enough mother, not a good enough wife, a good enough employee, anytime you think you're not beautiful enough or smart enough or capable enough, anytime you think you're not enough, that's a lie from the enemy. God would never say that to you. I want you to recognize that, and then I want you to choose to believe God's truth. A few years ago, I did a study, a word study, of the word choose in the Bible. And it's incredible if you look through the Old and New Testament, how many times God says you have the power and the responsibility to choose what you're going to believe, how you're going to operate. Are you going to believe God's word? I want to encourage you this week just to get into the scripture and look for those things that God says about you. Look for his truth and begin to base your life and your belief system off of that because that's what's going to change your life. Maybe the lies you believe aren't about yourself, but they're about the world around you and it's suffocating you, suffocating the joy out of you. I mean, it's hard with this constant news feed, with all the difficulty that's going on in the world. But God wants you to experience his joy. Get back into his word. Read the truth. Believe the truth. Operate on the truth. So often when life is hard and we don't understand, what do we do? We begin to question God, right? We question his goodness. We question his heart toward us. We question his promises. Are they really true? Remind yourself this week of what God has already done for you. Remind yourself of his goodness of what he's going to do for you. God's never despairing. He's never helpless, never overwrought, no, never hopeless. I mean, we just sang, sang about it earlier. He's bigger than we think he is. We don't give him credit. He wants to step in. He wants to step in and help you and change your life. Romans 15, 13 says this, now may the God of hope fill you with complete joy and peace as you continue to believe so that you overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You have to continue to believe. That's a choice you make. And as you do, you experience joy. Are you going to continue to believe him or not? Are you going to continue to believe his promises or not? Are you going to continue to trust him or not? It's your choice. You have the power to choose. You know, the Bible says that we have a good, good father. It's not merely what he does, it's who he is. That's his character, and he loves you. He loved you before you were born. He designed you. He loved you when you were a little girl, and he loves you today. And whatever's going on in your life, wherever you find yourself, God loves you. That's who he is. He designed you. And we live in a fallen world. Tragedies, heartache happen every day. And they happen to people we love, and they happen to you, and they happen to me. But that doesn't change the fact of God's love for you. Nothing can change that. When we focus on the cross and the fact that God sent his son Jesus there so that we can have relationship with him, that answers everything. Maybe you have doubts, maybe you have questions, but that's the answer. You are loved, you are safe, you are secure. God is here. He wants to be with you. He wants to walk with you. The answer's the same. You are loved, I am loved, and it's the greatest truth and the world and all its harm and horror can't touch that. It can't take it away from you. Listen to what Paul told us in the letter to the Romans. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing. That's pretty much everything, right? Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. God loves you so much. He sent his son to die for you. He is for you. He fights for you. You can trust his goodness. The end of your story is a good one, no matter what's going on today. And I know some of you, that may be hard to believe, and you may be struggling, and you're right on the edge today. And I just want to encourage you, if that's you, please pick up the phone today and call our counseling center. 
let one of our pastoral counselors walk through this difficult time with you or one of our licensed counselors if you need that help. Don't try to do it alone. Let us be here for you. That's why God has you here at Community of Faith. And you know, God's greatest desire for you is intimacy with you. Did you know that's why he created you? Everything that's going on in your life, the good things, the bad things, the hard things, they're designed so that you will draw closer to him and have intimacy with him. That's what he wants for you. That's why that's happening in your life. I'm not saying he causes bad things in your life because the Bible says God is good and everything he does is good in Psalm 119. But he takes everything in your life and he says, I want to know you. I want you to have relationship with me. I want intimacy with you. That's God's design. That's what he's trying to do. And when you draw close to him in the middle of the brokenness and hurt, that's where you find his joy and peace and strength and hope. That's what he's trying to do in your life. Joy that stands in the face of whatever the world throws at you. Joy that is confident. because It knows that God is for us, even in the times that it seems like he doesn't, isn't. That's what I want you to know today. Maybe, maybe you don't yet have a personal relationship with God. I want to encourage you to just give it a try today. Say something like, God, if you're really real, if you want to have a relationship with me, then I step in today. Ask him just to show you. The Bible says in Psalm 34, 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. Tell him you want to taste and see. You want to see if he can make a difference in your life. And I promise you he'll show up if you say it and you mean it. I want you to listen to one of my favorite verses in the scripture. It's from Isaiah 54, 10. It's probably the favorite scripture of mine. It says, even if the mountains were to crumble and the hills disappear, my heart of steadfast, faithful love will never leave you. And my covenant of peace with you will never be shaken, says Yahweh, whose love and compassion will never give up on you. I want you to take that verse this week, maybe when you get home today and, and personalize it for you. Even if, and then fill in the blank, whatever it is that's going on, even if there's a pandemic, God's heart of steadfast, faithful love will never leave me. Even if my husband betrayed me, your heart of steadfast, faithful love will never leave me. Even if I lose my job, God's heart of steadfast, faithful love will never leave me. Even if my kids have rejected me, even if whatever it is, what's your story? Fill in the blank and see that God's heart is for you. I think a lot of us are trying to hold on to that steadfast love. We think it's our responsibility and we're feeling like we're failing. But the truth is, it's all up to God. All we have to do is say, God, I need you and reach our hand out and he reaches down. And it's his faithfulness that grabs hold of you and it won't ever let go. No matter what's going on, no matter how you feel, no matter what it seems like, God's truth and his promises will stand and he will hold on to you. I heard a song on the radio this week and, and I've asked Jess to sing it for you today. And I wanna close with that and I'll come back and close this when we're done. But ladies, I want you just to close your eyes this morning and I want you to listen to the words as Jess sings. God is here today and he wants to speak to you. And he wants to speak to the men in the room today as well and online. But as she sings, I want you just to ask him, God, what is it you're trying to say to me? What do you want me to know? Help me to experience your joy and your peace today. So as Jess sings, ask him to show you what he's trying to say today.
Thank you, Jess. Will you pray with me? God, this is your truth we stand on today, that we know you are bigger than we think you are, that you are all powerful, that your presence brings joy and peace and strength and hope. God, forgive us. Forgive us for not believing. Forgive us for not taking time to connect with you. God, we want to today. You're all we want. God, I pray as we step into this week that you would remind us to come to you daily, to be filled with your spirit, to walk in your truth, to believe your truth, no matter what it feels like, no matter how it seems or what we think, that we would stand in your truth. God, I thank you for what you're gonna do. It's in Jesus.